and welcome to St Guthlatt's Church near Boston as part of the coastal cluster. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praises forever. And we have our first hymn, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. And our prayer of invitation. Come among us, Jesus, you whom the angels worship and children welcome. Come, Jesus, and meet us here. Come among us, Jesus, you who hurled the stars into space and shaped the spider's weaving. Come, Jesus, and meet us here. Come among us, Jesus, you who walked the long road to Bethlehem and lit the flame that dances forever. Come, Jesus, and meet us here. And now for our confession and forgiveness. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us for letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to
to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A thousand years in God's sight are like a single day, like an evening that has already gone. Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. You hold the key to God's way of, it, of justice. Open to us your kingdom of peace. And now we'll have our first reading from Liz. Thank you, Liz. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 to 11. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Liz. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 10 verses 24 to 39. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for stu students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark speaks in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And every even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I do not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the jubilate. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Am I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So apparently it has been said that the phrase, do not be afraid, is repeated in the Bible 365 times. This is not true, however, and unfortunately, as we would then have a verse of every day throughout the year to remind us and help us not to be afraid. The phrase, do not be afraid, does in fact appear 79 times in the Bible, which is still a considerable amount. And in this passage from Matthew today, This phrase appears twice in a short space of time. So let's look at why Jesus is telling his disciples not to be afraid and how this relates to us today. Jesus has been persecuted throughout his time as a preacher and a teacher. This has been relentless wherever he goes. He knows that ultimately he will pay a high price for spreading God's word. But this will be a sacrifice that leads to great things for all humanity. He is trying to get the message across to his disciples that there will be times they will need to make choices, difficult choices, to enable them to follow him. In this passage is the first mention of the cross in Matthew. It is used in connection of the disciples to walk in the way of Jesus. However, the connection to Jesus' death is also implied. Jesus will be crucified and he warns this may also happen to those who follow him. The disciples would have been aware that the crucifixion was a punishment meted out to non-Roman citizens, and that meant them. As we have said, Jesus warns them there'll be a price to pay for following him. Jesus has been ridiculed for his good deeds. Here he talks of Beelzebub, Beelzebub also known as Lord of the Flies, and he was associated with demonic in the early Jewish and Christian tradition. The Pharisees had accused Jesus of using Beelzebub power to drive out demons. Jesus had been labelled as evil due due to doing good deeds. If the master of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more than members of his household? Just by being in association with Jesus would tar the disciples with the same brush. Jesus was accused of casting spells and being in league with the devil. And this would, of course, this could also happen to them. They would need to stand firm and then they too will be vindicated. Jesus asked the disciples not to be afraid. God will be there throughout these challenges. He speaks of threats, physical harm, ridicule and possibly rejection by family and friends. He's really telling them how it is and how it will be. This is going to take courage, but the comfort is that they will inherit eternal life and begin at once to experience the benefits of knowing Christ. This passage still resonates today throughout the world as Christians continue to be persecuted for their beliefs. In this country are a lot luckier than many There are over 360 million Christians suffering persecution and discrimination around the world. This figure is from Open Doors, a charity which supports persecuted Christians throughout the world. They supply Bibles, emergency relief and help 
to persecuted believers to stand strong in the long term. Open Doors helps the church in the UK and Ireland to pray, give and speak out for those who share our faith, but not our freedom. And there's some heart-wrenching statistics on their website. 5,621 people were murdered last year for their faith. 5,259 Christians were abducted. 2,110 church buildings were attacked. And one in seven Christians around the world are persecuted for their faith. The persecution of Christians has continued for over 2,000 years and will no doubt continue for many more due to intolerant regimes around the world. We are one big Christian community and they need our help through prayer and monetary giving to help them combat this persecution. Their faith holds strong through adversity, just as the first disciples' faith did. We have started to notice a change of attitude to us as Christians today in our own society. People are less tolerant of our faith and anyone's faith for that matter. People become offended by the wearing of a cross or other symbols of religion. Our faith has been mocked and ridiculed on social media. It's so easy to hide behind a computer or a phone. This is no way comparable to the persecution of many Christians across the world but it can make us anxious and afraid too. We see people having to cover their necklaces with crosses on for work, or nurses being disciplined for praying with patients. This is discrimination and can make us fearful to show our faith publicly, which is very understandable. But Jesus is telling us not to be afraid. Much of Matthew's Gospel is about how we can live good lives and portray Jesus as a teacher of the people. And here he is in this passage teaching some difficult topics. Warn the disciples that the road they're on is not an easy one, but they are not to be afraid, as their faith will bring them eternal life. Follow Jesus and you'll reap the rewards. We too must follow him to reap those rewards. We need to take up our cross and live our lives as Christians in all we do. This, as we know, is never easy. Jesus speaks of the pitfalls of following him and the list is long, as we've said. And the disciples must have had their doubts and fears. But Jesus tells them again, do not be afraid. Those who are persecuted around the world must frequently have their doubts. They continue to follow Christ, but they must be frightened and scared, but they know they will get their reward, eternal life. Our own trials pale into, comp into comparison to theirs, but it can still be scary to, for us as Christians to be on the receiving end of ridicule, physical or verbal abuse. We must, however, hold on to our faith. Jesus wants us to proclaim from the roofs about our life with Christ, our faith and our love of God. We can start doing this by living our lives of Christians, letting people see that we live good lives. Let them make that connection between Christian life and a good life. And people need to know we are Christians to make these connections. Many of us worry about sharing our faith for fear of ridicule, but God is there with every step of the way. As we said at the beginning, the phrase, do not be afraid, does not appear in the Bible 30, 365 times. However, we can still make it part of our daily habit, something to remember every day. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with you. And let us go and share his good news. Amen. And now for an affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father who made all things? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? 
we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And the collect for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who is familiar with our world and understands our humanity. We pray for churches everywhere that the Holy Spirit will transform our worship and enthuse our praise. We pray for all the churches in our area and throughout the world. We ask that the Holy Spirit will overwhelm our lives and our witness with God's grace. We pray that our experience of joy, hope and the peace of God will be changed into deeds of compassion and into lives that demonstrate the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who face conflict, for those that are persecuted, all those that are tortured, imprisoned for their faith in Christ, for all those who are neglected, ignored, made to feel they don't count, for those who, for the sake of others, stand against injustice, corruption and evil, and do so at great cost to themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those that are timid about their faith, who find it easier to live as Christians than to tell others about Christ who find it more natural to be a silent witness to Christ and hope that others can see his love in what they do. Allow them, Lord, not to worry about being themselves, but also help them not to be afraid and give them courage to be a witness to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know to be in a particular need, for those who are sick and those who are dying, for those who mourn and those who are hurting, for those who are confused and those who are caring. We pray for ourselves and for all the challenges and pressures and all the opportunities for witness and service that will be part of our coming week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we place in your loving arms all those that have died. We thank you for them and their gifts to the world. We ask that they may know your mercy and everlasting peace and joy in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for our human potential for good and for your gifts of grace that make goodness a real possibility. Amen. And let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace. Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompanying us in this day's journey, dawn on our darkness, open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ our Lord. And our final hymn is I heard the voice of Jesus say, Thank you for tuning in today and our next online service will be at two weeks time. We hope we can, uh, you can tune into that as well. And the final blessing. The love of Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service and the joy of Lord Jesus fill our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit being among us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>